Hey guys, I'm Joe, this is Theo Joe Tech. Today's video is gonna be talking about RAID, specifically RAID 5 and RAID 6, and why you should never use RAID 5 at this point and only do RAID 6. If you're gonna have an NAS or a hard drive array for backup or anything like that. So stick around, it's pretty important stuff. So if you're not really that familiar with RAID or you need a refresher, basically RAID is just a way to combine different hard drives into almost a super hard drive so you can have them all work together and get increased storage and performance. So quickly I'll go over a couple of the common RAID levels. The first one is RAID 0. Basically in this one you're just combining all the hard drives together and whatever number of hard drives you add in times the size, that's how much space you're going to get. The advantage of RAID 0 is that you get maximum speed and performance for both reading and writing, but the disadvantage is that if one of the drive dies, then the whole array is dead and useless and you have to erase them all because all the data is spread out, so if one of the drives goes, then you can't rebuild the rest of it. The next level is RAID 1, and in this case, the drives are mirrored, which means that they're going to be exactly the same. So say you have two hard drives, as you write to it, it's going to write the same thing to both. So you have redundancy in the sense that if one of them goes, you obviously have the other and they're exactly the same. In addition to the advantage of redundancy, you also get increased read speed, but not write speed. But the disadvantage of RAID 1 is you don't get any more storage. If you have two drives, you're only getting one drive's worth of storage. And two other RAID types that I'm going to talk about in this video are obviously RAID 5 and RAID 6, as I mentioned. RAID 5 and 6 kind of have the best of both worlds because you get increased read and write speed, but also redundancy. But the space required for that redundancy is less because it uses a system called parity. RAID 5 has one of what's called a parity stripe. Now what this does is basically, you can think of it like having different parts of a backup distributed across all the drives. And it's in such a way that if you lose one entire drive, if one just fails, you can actually rebuild it using the other parts. This is because in this case with four drives, you're gonna have each drive with three data segments plus a parity segment. So you can use the remaining three parity segments to rebuild the three data segments in the lost drive. And because of the way it's set up, you could actually lose any of the drives, it doesn't matter which, and still rebuild it. And the advantage is that you get both redundancy and a performance boost in read and write speed. It's not quite as good as RAID 0, but it's pretty good enough, especially considering you don't lose half of the drive space like you do in RAID 1. Now the first disadvantage is that you lose one drive's worth of space because that amount of space is gonna be used up in parity. And the other disadvantage actually hold that thought because I'm gonna talk about it after I talk about RAID 6. So RAID 6 is pretty much the same thing as RAID 5, except you have two parity stripes, which means no matter how big the array is, you can actually lose two entire hard drives and still rebuild it. And the disadvantage of that would be that you lose two hard drives worth of space that goes towards parity. So let's get into why you should never use RAID 5 and instead use RAID 6. And I know at this point you're probably thinking, Joe, what's wrong with RAID 5? What are the odds you're going to lose two hard drives at once? Why, why is that no good? You can already rebuild it if you lose one. Well, that's a very valid point, but you are forgetting something. On any hard drive, you're occasionally going to come across read errors, specifically URE or unrecoverable read errors. In this case, you get to that point on the hard drive and the hard drive says, I can't read that. The data is gone. You just can't read it. When you go to rebuild a hard drive, there better not be any read errors or else you're not going to be able to rebuild that hard drive. Now, read errors are rare. Typically, a hard drive today is rated at one read error every 10 to the 14th bits. That's one every 100 trillion bits or around 12 terabytes. That's a lot of data, except if you're having a lot of drives put together in a RAID array. So for example, say you have seven two terabyte drives in RAID 5 and one of them dies. That's okay because you can afford to lose one and still be able to rebuild it. But now you've got 12 terabytes worth of drives that you're using to rebuild this last drive. If those drives are rated at 10 to the 14th for URE's, you're almost certainly going to come across a read error and the drives are just gonna fail to be able to rebuild and you lost everything. And even if the drives had error correction going on before the crash, 
A lot of times there's too much time going in between the different checks of a different segment, especially if you were using the drive a lot. It takes a while to get through the whole drive and check all the errors. So there might be one that it missed and then you're stuck. So now in this example, just because of that one read error and you can't rebuild, all that data is useless now, all the drives. And even if you don't have 12 terabytes, the risk is still significant because as hard drives get bigger and bigger and we use more and more storage, RAID 5 becomes less and less effective. They were saying back in 2009, RAID 5 wasn't even effective anymore. So now you pretty much need to use RAID 6. As I mentioned, RAID 6 has two parity stripes. So in this case, you can lose an entire hard drive and get an unrecoverable error and still be able to rebuild the drive. However, as drive sizes get larger and larger, RAID 6 will also become ineffective in the next several years. So if reliability is really important for you, what can you do? Well, in addition to using RAID 6, you can also get hard drives that are better rated for unrecoverable errors. I used examples for 10 to the 14th, but there are hard drives that are rated for 10 to the 15th bits for one URE, and that means that it is one tenth as likely to get an unrecoverable error. You can also use nested RAID levels such as RAID 60, which combines RAID 6 and RAID 0, which makes loss of data very unlikely. But the only advantage of that is because you're mirroring, you have to buy twice the amount of drives. So it gets really expensive. So for most people, you should use RAID 6 and not RAID 5. If you're not sensitive to losing data at all, you could even use RAID 0. And unless you have a huge array of a ton of space, then RAID 6 is gonna be fine. You're very unlikely to lose any data with that. But no matter who you are, you can always still look for hard drives that are rated at 10 to the 15th for URE. So now you can go into the specs of the hard drive and look at that and get a better idea of how reliable it is. And maybe you're wondering about triple parity, three stripes, so you can lose three hard drives. Well, that doesn't exist in RAID outside of proprietary array systems. However, I do believe in the next few years, as RAID 6 becomes more and more risky, that we'll see probably more systems that allow for triple parity, and that will probably be the new standard. So hopefully you guys found this video useful, and if you're using RAID 5, then you're walking on thin ice, switch to RAID 6. I wanna hear what you guys think in the comments section. We can continue the conversation down there. I wanna know what you guys think. Looking forward to hearing from you. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, or if I made any mistakes, also let me know in the comments section. If you wanna check out some other videos on the right-hand side and keep watching, you can just click them or look in the description for the same link, such as if you're on a phone, and if you wanna subscribe, I try to make new videos three times a week, so I think it should be worth it. You guys can also follow me on Twitter or any other social media sites. Links will be in the description. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.